What? We're all seeing a dancing owl, right? I'm not having a stroke. Today we watched the 1987 Italian horror flick Deliria, which is known as Stage Fright in the United States, and it begins with rehearsals for a play. The victim who rapes her own murderer should be sensational. My favorite part is Brett and Mercedes bickering back and forth at each other catch the genius who made this headdress. I'm gonna make him eat it. If you ask me, you ought to wear it all the time. It does wonders for you. God, I'm gonna kill whoever made this costume. I'm gonna... Stop kvetching, honey. You can always go back to microwaving chili at Mexico Joe's. Yeah? And you can go back to selling your ass in the men's room at the bus station. Darling. Mm -hmm. We also meet Sybil and Danny, who are having a baby. It's positive. Don't worry, Danny turns it around and is happy for the baby, like two scenes later. We also meet our main character and future final girl, Alyssa, who has a sprained ankle and her best friend brings her to a doctor. The only doctor they can find now is a psychiatric hospital, and the guy does a um, stellar job of curing her ankle by rubbing her thigh. Psychiatrists are doctors too, aren't they? Who's in there? Irving Wallace. Irving Wallace? You mean that actor who went berserk? The same. We're keeping him here while the court reviews his case. I've never heard about him. What did he do? But it was in all the papers. Gosh, he did horrible things. He killed people and chopped them up in little pieces. I think he killed 12 people. 16, actually. What? While well, leaving the hospital, they see a room with a medical cart in it and think nothing of it. The bad guy totally didn't sneak out and get into their car while they were getting groped by the doctor. Look, that must be Irving Wallace in there. Oh, come on, Betty. If we don't hurry up, Peter will kill us. The deranged actor slash serial killer gets right on with his killing pretty early by somehow finding a pickaxe and taking it to the head of best friend, also stealing the keys to the studio. The director has a brilliant plan because they immediately find the dead body. The best friend was a makeup artist, but they pretend she's one of the actresses, so they can change the play into a serial killer, snuck onto their stage, dressed as an owl, and started killing all of the actresses. So, he talks to the producer, Mr. Ferrari, gets extra funding, locks everyone in the building to rehearse this new play, and you guessed it, that's exactly what starts happening. You just stand there, grab her! So, you want me to just walk over and murder her in front of everybody? Okay! Sure, I'll murder people. Murder, murder, murder. Bye, everybody. See you later. Thanks for the murder. Unfortunately for our heroes, that was the only person who knew where the key was. They decided to give everyone overtime, lock the doors, and force them to rehearse a new play. This is going to be a short review because it's a slasher from here on out, and it's just a killer following everyone around until... Only final girl is left. Here's two randomly selected murders.
overall, this is a mildly insane Italian slasher flick. Tons of crazy deaths. The plot is just a psycho killer gets out of a mental institution and terrorizes a group of people who can't escape the area that they're in. Pretty standard, but there's hot women, lots of death and gore. What's not to like? The ending. The ending's not to like. The ending to this movie is terrible. Terrible. So, once the cops show up at the end and the ambulance shows up, just turn the movie off. You do not want to see the last, like, five minutes of this. It kind of ruins the vibe of the movie. It turns kind of comedic for some reason. And it's just not very good. So, yeah, once the ambulance shows up, stop watching. The cast for this one is... All Italian actors that I've never heard of. Uh, David Brandon is the director. He's going to be in another Italian movie I'm reviewing in the future. But other than him, you're not really going to run into these people in most of what you watch. This movie was directed by Michael Soavi, who did a lot of Italian television the movie Cemetery Man, and was the second unit director for a bunch of Terry Gilliam movies. In a shocker, well, a shock to me anyways, this movie was written by George Eastman, who starred in a ton of Italian post-apocalyptic movies that are pretty much interchangeable, so I might not actually get to any of them. Or I might have actually reviewed some of them already. It's really hard to tell. The dialogue was by a woman named Sheila Goldberg, who we kind of ran into in the past. She was a dialogue coach for Blue Tornado, a terrible ripoff of Top Gun that I reviewed a while back. She's mostly a dialogue coach, but wrote the dialogue for this movie. Thank you for watching. As always, I shall try to do better next time. Hopefully, I'll have the haircut next time. I got to the barber too late today. And here uh, is a bonus clip if I felt like putting one in. Goodbye. My little wife is worried about my health. So what do I get? Spinach. Can you believe it? Spinach. They're too fat anyway. Too fat? That's muscle, boy. Oh, muscle. Fix your Popeye. Fuck Popeye. Oh, yeah, because when all the murders except for the first one happen, the cops are outside the studio the whole time to see if the killer comes back, not knowing that the killer is already inside. There's also a whole side plot about how the reason why all these actors are willing to go through bullshit and do this play anyways is because they're shit revenue sharing in the profits of the play, and they all have rent, and this is their last chance to make any money.